Okay, class, all of your homework problems for the chapter five regular assignment have hints. So I would really like you to utilize those. On your screen, the left-hand side, right below the E button, there's a hint that will walk you through the problems. But I decided to also go ahead and do this one because I really like how it compares the allowance method to the direct write-off method. So the first journal entry you're going to record is services on account. You are a company that installs air conditioning systems. When you provide the work on account, it means a customer hasn't paid you yet. So you will need to debit accounts receivable for the amount shown in the problem, and you will need to credit service revenue on the first transaction. The second transaction says, some of those customers paid you. So in transaction number two, it says you collected. Remember that is a trigger that your brain should be thinking, I want to debit cash. If you collected $182,000, you will debit cash. You collected that from your customers on account, meaning the accounts receivables that was owed to you has now been received. So you will credit accounts receivable. The third journal entry is the estimated at the end of the year amount of bad debt expense. Every time you read a transaction in this chapter that talks about estimating the uncollectible, that is a trigger word that says you should be debiting bad debt expense and crediting the allowance for uncollectible accounts. Now the way we calculate this amount is we need to first figure out how much accounts receivables ending balance currently was. So you'll have to go back up to the top of the problem and find the beginning balance of accounts receivables. To find the ending balance and accounts receivables, you will first take the beginning balance given in the problem and add the amount you recorded as services on account in the first transaction. Then you will subtract the amount of cash you have received and credited the accounts receivable balance by. This would be your ending balance of accounts receivables. You will then take 15% or whatever estimated amount in your problem, it could be 10, it could be 12, that percentage will then be applied, it will be multiplied by that ending balance of accounts receivable to find out your bad debt expense amount. So once you have multiplied that percentage of estimated bad debt by the ending accounts receivable balance, you'll type that into this third journal entry. The fourth journal entry under the allowance method is to debit the allowance for uncollectible accounts with the amount given in the problem. When you do a write-off journal entry under the allowance method, you are debiting the allowance for uncollectibles and you are crediting accounts receivables. You are actually taking that balance off of your accounting records as being owed to you. Those are the four journal entries for this problem on question seven. That is using the allowance method. The next problem, number eight, is going to have you do all of these journal entries, but under the direct write-off method. The direct write-off method is not gap approved. It is only used by small corporations that are not publicly traded. So the first two journal entries are going to look exactly like the two that you did initially where you debited accounts receivable because that was the amount owed to you from your clients. The different methods between allowance and direct write-off doesn't change these first two journal entries. So that was the exact same journal entry we did using the allowance method. The second journal entry, I'm still debiting cash 
and I'm crediting accounts receivable because again, the different method that I am using to account for bad debt does not affect how I record revenue on account or cash received on account. The third journal entry triggers the difference between the two methods. The third journal entry should say no journal entry for the direct write-off method because it does not make an estimate. That is one of the major differences. It violates the matching principle because it does not record the bad debt expense until they actually decide to write something off. It doesn't make an estimate. It doesn't use the allowance account at all. So instead of having two journal entries for the direct write-off method, there'll just be one. And the only journal entry will be when they decide to write something off. There is no estimate entry with the direct write-off method. The direct write-off method will debit bad debt expense and credit the accounts receivable. It goes directly to the accounts receivable. It does not use the allowance account at all. So the major difference is when it records the bad debt expense. The allowance method will record the bad debt expense at the end of the year at the, as a journal entry to adjust to match up with revenue, but the direct write-off will not. So the final question is then going to be in relationship to the two journal entries that we did, asking if you realize the effect of those journal entries to bad debt expense. The allowance method recorded the bad debt expense in year one. And remember it was this amount where we had multiplied the ending accounts receivable. It's from your third journal entry on question seven. The direct write-off method posts the bad debt expense only in the second year. So the major difference between the two methods is the timing of when they record their bad debt expense. Direct write-off will only record bad debt expense once they decide to write something off. And it could be a year, two years, three years, five years, ten years after the initial revenue. Allowance method would actually record bad debt expense every year as an adjustment. So if this problem had followed all the way through, it would have another amount in this year two box. If you have questions, please review this video or watch the hint or email me at any time.